Hello out there all you geography fans and welcome to another how-to video. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a flow diagram for your geography assessment task. So a flow diagram is a type of diagram in geography that shows the relationship between different concepts and different impacts. So I'm going to show you how to make um, an example of one on the primary, secondary and tertiary impacts of earthquakes just on a Word document. There are other applications you can use um, but I prefer just to use Word because it is I guess the easiest. So to start off, I'm gonna go in insert shapes and I'm gonna insert a text box, just like so. Um, I wanna have my text in the middle of the text box, so I'm gonna click on this button here. Um, and then my first, first thing that's gonna be on the diagram is gonna be earthquake. I'm just gonna readjust like so. I'm gonna put that in the top and in the middle of my Word document. So right at the top there. All right, so I've got my first one on there. Now I'm gonna get into my primary impacts. So again, I could go insert shape again, but if I wanna keep them all roughly the same size, I can just click on it, press Control C on my keyboard, click out, and then press Control V. And then I've got another text box ready to go. I'm gonna put this one directly underneath. I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger. My first primary impact is gonna be damage to infrastructure. So like roads, buildings, hospitals, schools, that sort of thing. All right, again, I'm just gonna press Control V because I've already got the earthquake one copied. My next one is going to be a little bit bigger as well. So I'm gonna go injury and casualties for my next primary impact. And again, clicking away, just gonna spell casualties right. Clicking away, Control V, make it nice and even. And then my next one I might identify might be landslides. And then I'll readjust that one like so. All right, so now I've got my primary impacts here. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do now is go shapes and then do a line. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit actually. I'm just gonna draw a line, I do want it to be black between my cause, so my earthquake, and then my primary impacts. So again, it's coming up blue, I'm just gonna change the color, like so. Going from the corner, so I'll do that again. Going to the middle. All right, so those are my primary impacts of the earthquake done. So now I'm just gonna click Control C again on Earthquake, and now I'm gonna get into my secondary impacts. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna start with the injury and casualties and then the landslides, uh, because they're on the outer. So I'll make them nice and wide to give myself some space in the middle. So I'm gonna say there's gonna be obviously an impact on the natural environment if there's a landslide. So I'm gonna have that one there. Another text box now. It's just an easy way to get the same size and the same font. And then obviously there's gonna be injuries and casualties potentially from a landslide as well. So I'm gonna put that one there like so. Might make these a little bit smaller just to give myself some more room for later in the diagram because I'm gonna have a lot of secondary impacts for damaged infrastructure. All right, and then I'm gonna go injury and casualties Again, I'm just gonna start here. Might bring that a little bit further in actually for later on in the diagram. So this might have an impact on the labor force for the country or the place or the city. Certainly if people are injured, get my Australian spelling in there. And then I'll save another one for a tertiary impact. So I'm gonna leave this one here. And now damaged infrastructure is gonna have a fair few secondary impacts. So I'm gonna start putting them in now. I'll start linking those all up in a second. Might make that a little bit smaller. All right, the first one, we might have some housing issues or some displacement of people. So I'll leave that one like so. Just don't wanna make that one too big. Bring that one there. 
X1, bring that a little bit in. I'm going to have access to services and facilities. This is going to be impacted if there's damage to infrastructure. Let's get facilities right. Next one I'm going to have is some power outages. Certainly if there's damage to like power infrastructure. Might make that one even a little bit smaller. So you can see why I did the outside ones first. So now I'm going to just going to have to readjust. Great. Just move that one over. All right. And then my last one, I'm going to have, just going to bring it down here to start. And I have access to food and clean drinking water might be impacted as well because of the damage of that earthquake. All right. I'm going to move power outages out here, actually. I'm going to move housing displacement. So you can see it's quite fiddly, which is why I do it on Word in a text box. You can do it on like Canva, but Word is just, I guess, easier. All right, so now I need to start doing my little lines to connect them all. So I'm going to zoom in, go from the bottom corner again into the middle. Go again. So remember, I've got to connect housing issues. That should actually be all. Displacement. All right, another line. So these are all, my, again, my secondary impacts. And that's the benefit of a flow diagram. It shows you types of impacts and the relationship between those impacts as well. All right. And then landslides. We can have injury and casualties. And obviously an impact on the natural environment too, if there's a landslide. Okay, I might just tidy that little line up a bit. Right, now it's time to get into my tertiary impacts. So what are the impacts that stem from these secondary impacts? So let's have a look at them now. So they're mainly going to come from damage to infrastructure. So again, my baseline one is going to be earthquake. So I'm going to click on that, control C, control V. I'm going to bring these down here. Okay, so the first one I'm going to start stemming from is access to services and facilities. So we might have longer lasting impacts on the economy. Especially if these earthquakes keep happening in a, a given place. For example, Haiti, I guess is a good example of what can happen if you keep having regular earthquakes. We can also have, I'm going to go back here, control C, control V. can also impact your education in your city, your town, your country. If there's damages to schools or there's uh, poverty caused by the uh, jobs being lost or anything like that. I'm just gonna go another one for here for housing and displacement. I'm gonna have potentially long lasting homelessness. Might bring that one further over here. Move these over. All right, I might start connecting some of these lines so I don't get mixed up. Before I move on any further. So again, these are my tertiary impacts. Alrighty. So I've got a couple of tertiary impacts already. 
Um, I'm going to add another like long lasting tertiary impact from injury and casualties up here as the primary impacts. So I'm going to chuck it over here. So I'm going to go control C back on my master text box. So obviously from this, there's going to be some long lasting impacts on mental health. Again, that's not a secondary impact because it's more, it's longer lasting than that, isn't it? So I can go straight from there to there as well. So you can see there's different types of impacts um, being demonstrated on my flow diagram. All right, access to food and drinking water. I definitely want to have another tertiary impact here. I'm just going to copy the education one because it's right there. I'm just going to move that over. It's still connected to its line. Might even move that. All right, so this can have impacts on long-term food and water security, especially if you have damage to infrastructure like your pipes, roads. All right, I'm gonna have my line here for this tertiary impact. Make it the same color as all the other ones. All right, so let's say I'm happy with my flow line diagram now. So I've got essentially my primary cause here. So the earthquake has caused these primary impacts here on this layer here. My second level is the secondary impacts. And then my last level here are the tertiary impacts. Um, so I can leave it as is, let's say in my assessment task now. Um, one of the decent ways if you have to start moving this around in your assessment task um, is to essentially, I'm actually gonna do this. I'm essentially just going to take a snip of it, right? So that's going to be easier for me to manipulate uh, long term. So instead of just moving around all these text boxes, so essentially I'm going to take a snip like this. Uh, I'm just going to go copy um, and I can even say put it on like a new Word document now. Um, so I'm going to go paste. And so you can see I've, I've got like my uh, flow diagram here. I can manipulate pretty easy. Um, super easy to put a border on it now too, that it's an image as opposed to a bunch of different text boxes. Um, so I might call this figure one, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Get my spelling right again. Impacts of an earthquake. So it's good for an assessment task on say like natural disasters. Um, my source, is going to be National Geographic 2023 for the year. Um, I'll just remove the spacing too to make it look a little bit neater. So click on this button here, remove spacing. So that's all nice titled and sourced now and treated as a proper figure in my geography assessment task. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this video tutorial was beneficial for you and your studies and good luck with your work in geography.